Infinityexist.com. I'm not just a patch, and today we're going over going over bypassing hotspot access control. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna use session stealing, DNS tunnel, king tunnel. Let's go get the Starbucks. All right, for our first uh, attack, we're gonna go over something called session stealing. Basically, what it is is uh, changing your MAC address to match a MAC address of somebody that's already connected to the network that has paid to use the internet. This allows your network traffic to go through unblocked. Um, there are a couple different ways to find out who is on the network. One would be to do an IP or to do a ping scan. Uh, unfortunately, the network we are on does not allow that, so we're going to use Arrow Dump to uh, find some users on the network. Um, just pull up a web browser here after we connect to the network and you can see that it doesn't allow us to go anywhere. It's asking us to buy their Wi-Fi. I think it costs about four dollars for two hours. Something absurd like that. and We're not going to pay that. Alright, first step is to put our uh, wireless network card into monitor mode. And first we'll put it up, monitor mode, and then we're going to start up arrow dump and see the SSID of that network. And then we're going to specify just uh, traffic for that specific network, just so we can find uh, the user MAC, a user's MAC address for that ATT Wi-Fi. Uh, to do that, that's just uh, arrow dump dash ng dash dash bssid the SSID of that uh, wireless access point and then your interface. For us, it's our USB. And we'll just wait for some traffic on the network. It's good to pick a station that uh, is actually has some packets flowing and uh, there's one for us. We're going to use the one that has um, some good traffic going there. So, Alright, now that we've got the MAC address of a, an active client on the network, we're going to want to change our MAC address to their MAC address. But first we want to, we're going to change our wireless uh, in network interface back to manage mode. For us we're having some problems just turning it straight back so if you're using a USB dongle, the best is just to unplug it and plug it back in. But once you get that back up into managed mode, we're going to use Mac Changer. It's just Mac Changer M, the desired MAC address, and then the interface. We want to just put the interface back up, and we can see that our MAC address has been changed. And we're just going to run the wireless assistant to connect back to that ATT network. And show you that uh, using that spoofed MAC address, that that gives us access to the internet. Now that we're connected, we're just going to pull up Firefox and go to infinityexist.com. There you go, working like a charm.
The second method we're going to demonstrate is the DNS tunnel. DNS stands for Domain Name System, and it's a naming system for computers and servers. Basically, it associates a server's domain name with other information like its IP address. Most of the time, paid hotspots do not block traffic between your computer and their DNS server. We can tunnel our internet data through DNS packets to a fake DNS server to bypass the hotspot's access controls. The DNS server that we'll be using is iodine, and it'll be running on a CentOS computer. You probably could run it on any uh, Linux distribution or even Windows. To install iodine, just go to its website and download the tarball. Just extract the source code. Alright, um, and now I'm going to log into root using the su command. And to compile and install the code, just do make and then make install. And uh, iodine will be installed to uh, user local sbin directory. Iodine is a client, and iodined is the server, which I'm guessing stands for iodine daemon. And that's all you have to do to install it on the server. Let's hop over to the client. For the client, I'll be using Windows just to show you how to install iodine on uh, a Windows computer. For iodine to run on Windows, you're going to need to download a few things. You're going to need to download the Windows binaries from the iodine website. You're also going to need to download a MinGW, uh, which is just GNU software for Windows. And you're also going to have to download OpenVPN. Alright, once you have MinGW installed and OpenVPN, you're going to have to use OpenVPN to create a new TAP interface. They provide a batch file to do that for you. Right. And once it's created, you're going to have to rename it to DNS. As you can see, there's the tap interface right there, and just rename it to DNS, all lowercase. That way, iodine knows what interface to use. Alright. And here's the binary files that you downloaded. Uh, if everything was installed correctly, um, you should be able to run these and have the DNS tunnel work. Now that we have iodine installed on our server and client, uh, we want to test it out to make sure everything's working properly. So I'm just going to hop over to the server computer here and start up the iodine daemon. iodined dash f, that means to keep it in the terminal. And then you want to specify the IP address of the server. And you want to make sure that IP address is not included on any subnet in your network. And then I'm going to put test. And basically what will happen is the DNS tunnel will respond to any DNS packets associated with the test host name. And then just push enter and input the password that you want to use. And now that the server is running, we can hop over to our other computer and start the client. It's just going to open up the command prompt. Uh, do dash F the IP address of the server. You may notice that this is a public IP address. In the situation that we're in right now, we're not on the same land, so we do have to use the public IP address.